call the Brevard High School District 228 Board of Education meeting to order. Can I have the roll call, please? Mr. Canning? Here. Mrs. Gleason? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Jones? Here. Mrs. Campbell? Here. Mrs. Ressler? Here. Ms. Stearns? Here. Please rise and take lunch. will outline with, that with strong fiscal responsibility, the district continues to move in the right direction. Some of our budget highlights for this year. Again, as in the past, the board main, main priority has been focused on the students and our academics. Despite the very difficult times that we're facing throughout the state, the district has maintained fiscal responsibility without the elimination of student programs or student opportunities. These are what we feel are key in Greta District 228, and this includes retention of all of our certified staff along with our support staff. And this is unlike many of our surrounding <coughs> districts that are in financial difficulty. You'll see, if you look at and compare their district to ours, you'll see a number of cuts to programs as well as staff. Another thing to highlight is the budget increases overall expenditures by less than 1%. And this does not include our, our capital projects because we do have dollars in this budget for our capital campaign when you compare that to the FY16. So again, we're, we're proud of the fact that we're trying to do everything that we can to minimize expenditures. We're looking at operating soundly despite the fact that we had over a million dollars uh, reduced in general state aid last fiscal year due to the prorations uh, throughout the state. And again, that's tied to the state's difficult financial situation that they're in. Under the direction of the Board of Education and the leadership of the superintendent, we positioned ourselves well to withstand the impact of additional unknowns. And we'll get to this a little bit later in the slides, but we project that at the end of fiscal year 2017, we will finish with an operating fund balance of over $46 million. And again, this is done through strong fiscal management over the course of a number of years. In terms of technology, we continue to pride ourselves on being on the cusp of technology. And we do a very a lot for our students and our staff in this district with a, a minimum number of technology staff and, and a limited technology budget. But this year the budget includes replacement of nearly 300 computers, which encompasses some of our labs, our mini labs, as well as workstations. We've added 30 new teacher iPads to go along with the iPads that we purchased the last couple years for our teachers. We've added 1,400 iPads as well as cases for our students. As most of you are aware, this is our second year of our one-to-one -one initiative. Last year, our freshmen received iPads. This year, the incoming freshmen receive iPads. So we have two classes that all now have their own one-to-one -one device. This also includes funds for upgrading our server infrastructure, our mobile device management software to better uh, allow management of our one-to-one -one devices, and our firewall replacement to go along with the upgraded technology. We've also reduced expenditures in the operations and maintenance funds by $130,000 in comparison to last year. We've increased our capital funding by $10.8 million. 
This is a significant piece. Last month, the board approved the tentative capital uh, projects plan, and we're very excited to have dollars in this budget to get that started. Uh, we feel this is going to be a great benefit for our students, our staff, our parents, and our community as we move forward with this capital campaign, enhancing our facilities. Uh, we're looking at field houses, we're looking at additional classrooms, we're looking at upgraded fitness and weight room facilities, as well as training room facilities and additional storage space, along with the opportunity to have turf fields, which will help assist with a lot of the issues that we currently have throughout our campuses, which deals with water retention and water management. So we're excited to have funds in there to get the first phase of this going. Also, another highlight is we're not required to complete an Illinois State Board of Education Deficit Reduction Plan uh, for this fiscal budget. It represents another example of us being fiscally responsible. Looking at some of our revenues and comparing them to prior years budgeted revenues, you can see that our total revenues for this year are at $88.1 million. Uh, notable there is our general state aid. We're looking at an increase in our general state aid of approximately $1.4 million. And we attribute that to the state coming together and eliminating the proration. So for this year, the first time in six fiscal years, there will be no proration. Now, the thing that we aren't necessarily positive about is will we receive all of our general state aid payments? Uh, we've seen this in the past where if, if funding runs short, the state will withhold uh, potentially the last payment or possibly the last two payments in the month of June. So that could create problems, but listening to the legislators <coughs> in Springfield and Governor Rauner, uh, that is not supposed to happen this year. Taking a look at our revenues as far as a breakdown, again, um, very heavily reliant on real estate taxes, as are all the other school districts in the state of Illinois. And again, this ties in with Illinois being ranked near the bottom in terms of funding education. Rather than state funding education, that reliance ends up being on our real estate tax collections. Second there is our general state aid at 22%. And our other items include our local revenues, our grant, state grants, and federal grants, which are pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. Taking a look at a snapshot of our expenditures, and again, comparing this to prior years, and this does not include our capital projects, our fund 60 of that $10.8 million, but our salaries and our employee benefits comprise the majority of what we're looking at in terms of our expenditures, which is typical of, of almost every school district that you'll see. We have a total uh, budgeted expenditures this year at $91.7 million. It's so up about $300,000 from last year. Again, um, minimal increase in our expenditures. If you compare us to other districts, you're going to see a lot bigger numbers here in terms of year-over-year -year annual expenditure increases. But we, we're doing everything that we can to try and sustain our expenditures as we move forward from one year to the next. Taking a look at that in terms of how that graphs out. Again, salaries and benefits comprise the majority making up 67% of our expenditures along with some of the items, other items that we have in there including our capital outlay, um, purchase services, and our supplies and materials. Comparing our budgeted deficit of our operating funds, which are our education fund, our operations and maintenance fund, and our transportation fund. Going back from fiscal year 2013, moving forward, you can see the trend is moving in the right direction. 
we're, we're not at a balanced budget yet. We still have some things that we need to improve upon, and we're going to continue to work on those. But you can see that the trend is heading in the right direction. This is the lowest projected operating deficit that we've had in the last five years, of coming in about $1.1 million less than we, what we budgeted for last year. In terms of this operating deficit um, for last year, what we budgeted versus our actual uh, recent numbers from our auditing firm show that our actual deficit came in at $2.1 million. So again, significant improvements as we move forward. Some of the challenges and things that could potentially be threatening to the district that are still floating out there, some of these are recurring because um, they're still being kicked around down in Springfield as possibilities. Uh, and one of those is that Senate Bill 1046, which would generate a property tax freeze on extensions, and that would allow us not to, re to levy for any additional revenues over the prior year's levy. Uh, this is something that, again, from what we hear is being talked upon that is going to pass. It's just a matter of when this will be implemented and when it will impact the district. But if it is, we're looking at, um, again, depending on the CPI, the impact can be anywhere from a million to a million and a half dollars per year for the district. Another piece of legislation being discussed is the TRN, TRS, the Teachers Retirement System Pension Cost Shift. They're discussing moving that locally, and the impact, depending on how they phase that in, could be significant to the district. But if they phase this in at a 1% uh, per year, we're looking at about a half a million dollars of increased cost to the district for this shift. Next thing there is the cuts to mandated categorical funding. This is something that the state has relied on in the past when funds become low and they've foregone the last payment to districts. And again, depending on how that shakes out, that could be anywhere from a half a million to a million dollars of an impact to the district. And the last thing on there are reductions to the corporate personal property replacement tax. We did in fact see a hit this budget for this. We were reduced by about $80,000 for this budget. And one of the factors that played into that was they adjusted the rate uh, for businesses. So businesses were able to claim a little higher rate and that meant that the districts were going to receive less in terms of this replacement tax. If this is eliminated altogether, we're looking at an annual impact of over $670,000. <clears throat> Due to our strong fiscal management by the Board of Education, uh, we estimate to have over $46.2 million, as I mentioned previously, in operating fund balances at the end of June 30th, 2017. And this is a significant piece for the district. And, and as you take a look at this, you'll notice the education fund is projected to have almost double the balance that it had the prior year at 1.2. Our operations and maintenance fund, we project to be just under $10 million at the end of the fiscal year. Our transportation fund, we project to go up $5.1 million. And our working cash fund is going down to $30 million. Now, part of the reason for the decline in that working cash fund is that the board will later on be approving an abatement from the working cash fund for four and a half million dollars to offset prior year's deficits. One of the things that the state budget form does not allow is for you to start with a negative fund balance. So you have to transfer funds into the beginning balances so that you do not end up with a negative ending fund balance. But overall, as you look at our fund balances, we consider these to be very helpful. Now, as many hours have gone into this budget, and I'd like to thank all the district supervisors, all the district administrators, and the Board of Education for all their time and efforts that have gone into this budget. 
At this time, I would like to take any questions that anyone may have. Um, the educational fund there that shows a $5.7 million deficit. I know we went over it in committee, but our audience. So one, one of the issues that we have in running an ed fund deficit versus the other ones is because of the assessments that we've seen over the last few years, our property tax uh, values have gone down. And in Cook County, we are tax capped, so we're limited in terms of <laughs> what we can let for in each of the operating funds. The education fund is one of our capped funds at $3.50, and because of the assessments, uh, that has bumped that education rate up near the cap, so we're limited in terms of what we can let for in that education fund. And that's the main reason that you see a deficit balance in that fund, is because we just don't have the abilities to levy enough dollars in that fund. And that's our largest fund by far in terms of all of our district funds. And this fund typically starts in a deficit every budget year and we move money from working cash to there to get the year started. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. That's been what has taken place over the last number of years, yes. We're ending with the deficit um, at the end of the fiscal year and then we're borrowing from that working cash to offset that deficit going into the new fiscal year. And that's been part of the plan that we've laid out and, and talked about for a number of years. Um, each time we've gone through a bond issue, we've explained that that is to offset that. And the key thing to note there is, if you look at the projections from five years ago, the working cash bond should be just about depleted. But again, because we done a good job of maintaining a manageable deficit, we still have a strong fund balance in our working cash fund. When was our last bond issue? Uh, we have... To supply the working capital fund. Yeah, our last bond issue was three years ago, I believe. And that prevented us from being depleted at that point in time, That's correct? correct. Mr. Please. I'm going to uh, correct that the only way to change that uh, Situation is with a uh, referendum. I mean, it's been 21 years since we passed a referendum, which would change that three dollars and fifty cents. That's a great point. It, that was in 1995 when we did pass a referendum throughout the district. It was stated at that time that that would sustain us for five to six years, and we we maintained that for 21 years without going back to the taxpayers. But that's exactly what we need to take place is. We'd have to put a rate increase referendum on the ballot in order to adjust that. And that, that rate, that set rate, coupled with, I, I believe the, uh, well, I know that the utilized uh, assessed value for our district has gone down 27% the last, since 2008. That's correct. So there's no way to, those two things just don't balance out. Right. As the rate, assessed value goes oh. down, the rate goes up to offset that, and that's where not only us, but a lot of other districts are bumping into that same problem where they're at their rate ceiling for the Ed Fund. And, and that is part of why you see some of the growth in the other funds, the O&M and the transportation, because we're not near that ceiling and we can levy those dollars in those funds. So, but what we're doing, in a nutshell, is we're issuing bonds to support our deficit, correct? Because we are taking money out of the working cash to support the deficit, correct? We are utilizing our working cash fund to offset deficit spending. That's right. We're not taking the bonds. We, we bonds. issue bonds. Right. We right. issue we're, bonds to our working cash because we're depleting. Well, five years ago, did right. you say? Right, great. But I just, you, you had said so what we're basically doing in this. Is we're issuing bonds. We're not like Mrs. Gleason said. We're not going to the public asking right. for referendums. But well, we're in a sense, we're going right. to we're not going to the community, we're, we're amongst the board, we're okaying bond issuings like like it's a credit card, right? No doubt. And we pay back our company. What? 
then please explain why we issue bonds. Are you saying that each time we're making a transfer from working cash to the solution, that's, that's not at all what I'm saying. Okay, that's what I'm trying to clarify. <laughs> I'm saying what our practice has been, okay, and I've only been on here for four years, so you've been on much longer, so you know, I'm just asking this question because I want to clear up some, some different information here. We issue bonds to support our deficit. I believe in, in finance committee we talked about um, what was it, Tom? Uh, Ten years that we had before we would deplete again if we don't issue bonds, correct? And depending on some things that happen with the state, we're, we're looking at anywhere from eight to ten years. Now that's one of the abilities we have in, uh, to stay away from going to the public and asking money on a referendum, as Mrs. Gleason had just stated, correct? That's we issue correct. bonds, which is debt, which we are still in, we have to pay that back. That's correct. Okay. I actually, I actually have more of a statement versus a question, and I think, um, I think if I misquote or misstate anything, please feel free to correct me. But um, as the chair of the finance committee, I spent a lot of time researching the budget and, and going over, you know, past practices, current practices. Um, you know, and, and I do I do hold a finance degree, and I, I even studied um, in my master's corporate finance. So I feel I have a thorough knowledge of what exactly is being presented here. Um, not everything, you know, it's been some time since I've been in school, but I definitely have spent a lot of time on this, making sure I understand. And I do want to reiterate to you know not only the board but also to our community and our taxpayers that all this information that Tom has been presenting. Um, in the past and then today is in fact on the school district website. So I do encourage you to spend some time if you're not able to right now to go to the website under the finance tab and take the time to review the documentation. And please come to the finance committee with any questions that you may have so that the finance committee and Tom O'Malley can directly address them and provide you with accurate information. Um, definitely encourage you to come out. Um, I also want to reiterate, well, we see the deficit and, and right away it seems very alarming and what are we doing and has it been in this manage? I do also want to reiterate that, that the board has not provided the finance committee or Tom O'Malley to come up with a balanced budget and there are specific reasons for that. There are in fact some very negative ramifications to our staff and to our students if we were to do that. It's not a question of if we can, we absolutely can eliminate the deficit today if you'd like us to, but there are some very negative ramifications including the reduction of 36 staff members. We do not want to take that chance at all. We want to, um, like Tom had mentioned, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are able to retain our staff and retain all school programs. Um, but if that is the direction that the board wants, we will definitely give that to Tom, but that direction has not been provided. Another reason why that has not been provided is because the administration has shown for years that they are making strive efforts in reducing the deficit not only in the budget, but in the actual numbers. So while you're seeing the numbers that Tom is presenting today and the budget, the actual numbers are in fact quite lower than that. So given this <coughs> constant effort that the administration has been presenting to us, the opportunities that they are presenting for our students at the same time, you know, not having to eliminate staff or programs, it definitely speaks volumes to the fiscal responsibility that the administration today has had with its current and previous board members that have sat in the seat. Um, so uh, again, it's not that we're sitting here saying that we're okay with the deficit or we, we just like things as status quo, that is not the case. The administration is working very hard to reduce this de deficit and making some very um, you know, strong decisions with the board uh, and always looking for opportunities to find ways to reduce it and, and we'll continue to do that. I don't know anybody else more than Tom O'Malley that wants a balanced budget, but um, by no means do it. I want anyone walking away here thinking, Oh, negative deficit, um, you know, bad situation, fiscal irresponsibility. That is, I promise you, not the case. And if you have questions about that um, or are questioning that, because it, again, it, 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 took me, it took me some time to research it and to get really comfortable with it and to understand thoroughly. Um, and I definitely, like I said, encourage you to take the material home, go on the website and do the same thing, and come back to Finance Committee and or the board with your questions, um, you know, so that we can clarify that for you. Where did you come up with the number of a reduction of 36 staff members to balance the budget? It was research that was completely 
and not shared with the full board? It was actually shared with the full board. <coughs> what meeting? I don't know which meeting right now, but it was shared. Well, I appreciate your facts, but I'd like to know, I'd like to have you support them. It's a mathematical equation. $3.4 million divided by an average salary. You can do it, I can do it. From 36 discussion. <laughs> Sorry, uh, let me rephrase. There will be a need to reduce staff if we reduce the one thousand budget. Do you want to reduce one or thirty-six? Does it matter? Well, I'd like to see a balanced budget, and I think it can be accomplished without reduction of staff or reduction of programs. I I beg to differ. Mr. O'Malley. <coughs> yes. <sir. coughs> if the state had paid us all money. Uh, if you would have been very close to a balanced budget. Two years ago, we would have had a balanced budget. Last year, we would have been um, right around a balanced budget as well. But when the state gets itself together eventually, they start kicking in all the funds that they're supposed to, then we can really look at it and have a balanced budget. So one, of the, one of the big discussions now is the changing of the funding formula. Um, and that's been going on for as long as I've been in education, but I think they are finally coming close to come to an acceptable formula. And should that happen, um, there, there are several plans floating out there, but in either situation, both plans favor our district. So we can, we can anticipate anywhere from one and a half to three million dollars additional state aid with either of those two plans should they implement those two? And, and with that being the case, then that would come pretty close to eradicating our deficit. And we might remember right when we all, the economy started to tank and everything started going bad, like the state started getting tough. We would had a deficit of 12 million, is that? Um, I, I believe in 05, when a couple years prior to me starting, we were just a, around $11 million deficit. What was our working, no, excuse me, do you know what your question is? Yeah. What was our working cash fund at that time, if I could jog your memory? Yeah, I, I could tell you offhand, I'd have to go back and take a look. At the time of the 12 million deficit. Yeah, I honestly, that was prior to me being in this position, and I'd have to go back and research that. Could you do that for me? Sure. And the board, thank you. I know you had addressed her about the uh, when we all talked about it. I believe it was the last meeting um, where, well, it was actually last year around Ju July, August meeting when we had a committee, a whole meeting, and instead of uh, Superintendent Kendall addressing one, each one, each of us at one time, there was a mention of if we did uh, do a balanced budget. Um, this would be the repercussions and we're supposed to get back to say whether we want to balance it or if we wanted to uh, maintain the budget where it was. And then I believe as a as a board we got back, it might have been two two meetings after that, which I believe is July or August. And you can look at the tape if you like to um, for July, August committee of the whole uh, meeting where Superintendent Bill from the was addressing us and uh, Tom O'Malley was stating if we did a re reduction, this is what we'll have to uh, do. So right. I remember this meeting the whole meeting, but we never met as a board afterward to give the superintendent any direction on where we as a board we, wanted to be. Correct. We never got back we together never. on that. It was a four yeah. hour meeting basically for nothing. And the, 30, and it was the number of 36 employees were stuck in my head. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's just a, that's like an estimate because if you look at our at the charts here and graphs, it has where uh, the majority of those 80 something percent of our budget is around salaries and everything. So it's salary and benefits, salary benefits and all that. And you would have to, I mean, that's that's the majority of it. I mean, you just, you just have to take it and and do the math. And that's basically where those numbers came from. Those are just figures or just right. it was not anything we as a board had any discussion or direction to the superintendent about because of my, well my remember right no one there was no there was no one voice that okay yes we want to do this so how do you expect to take the action if it's not the direction 
That was the reason. We didn't have a meeting call. And we did because we give them that direction, though. Well, it has to be a, a unanimous direction. Am I right? Am I mistaken? Why didn't the matter find it? We had a unanimous direction. Nor did we meet again after the committee to hold to even discuss it. Because as I recall, there was the majority of the board did not want to go that path. Did we take a vote after that? For the majority of boards, so we know that it was the majority of boards at that particular time? I don't believe we didn't get the feedback from it. No one, no one gave it. There was no. Did you provide feedback? Are you asking? <laughs> Well, I think what we were asking for was a plan to reduce the deficit. A simple plan, just show us what can be done to reduce the deficit without reduction in force and without reduction in programs. And that's why we said you cannot do that. Yeah. I cannot I do that. Do that. Well, what is your suggestion? Because if you look at the funds, we have to look at the funds. The only one that's in the deficit is education, which is teachers and students. <laughs> that's the only one that's in the deficit. You're saying we can balance this budget without affecting that? Yeah. How? Well, Give me one example. Benefits that we think. Oh. They're contractual. You voted for the contract. Uh, I was not a board member then. I did not vote for the contract. No, I didn't vote for none of them because they've been in their position since I've been a board member. So I did not vote for one of those that's what I thought. Yeah, we voted on that. You were here. Well, I recall voting on the Yes, I'm sorry. I'm talking about administrative contracts, not teacher. Not teacher. Yeah, that's still what we discussed. Oh, it won't reduce the deficit. Not, it won't eliminate. It won't eliminate the deficit, which is what you're trying to get to. Well, you know. I'll speak for myself here. You know, I, I'm not in favor of deficit spending, and I understand there are some some things out of the district's control. I, you know, I, everybody knows that. But one thing you can't depend on is the state of Illinois to come through with any funding. And I think if we start taking that approach, you know, we we can start tightening our own belt by not depending on what is pledged to us. Okay, uh, and. I've had numerous conversations with our finance director about this, and he will not take direction unless it's by majority of the board, which is fine. That's what it is. That's I, I just said, correct. which is fine. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to be fine because you keep repeatedly asking him to do things on your behalf, and you're, you're no. really not fine with it. Take that. it to the full board. No, you, you even said in the last meeting you have asked him six times for a plan. That's you taking action. Deficit no. spending is dangerous. And I feel that it can be kicking the can down the road for another the board, board, for another is, administration. Is, 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 I, I think by developing a plan, and we are not going to reduce this overnight, obviously. Okay, we, yeah. we did not get in debt overnight. We're not going to reduce it. But I know this board member has asked repeatedly if we could see some options, some some hard board numbers on the table. Maybe one of those options would be reduction in areas that was discussed here, but. That doesn't mean that the board is going to be in favor of it, but maybe another option, the full board might be in favor of it. That's all I'm asking. See, this, um, prior to coming for saying that would be helpful to see the, the, the minutes of discussion that were held when, when Tom first became aware of problems with the state and said, all right, things are going to be, we're not getting our payments, we're going to tighten our belts and we're going to cut here, cut there, cut there, of all the things that have been cut. Mm -hmm. Until basically we exhausted everything that could be cut well, from to get it from the eleven you know, down to the two that we are now. Although every penny counts, and, I, and I'm a firm believer in that, you know, paper cuts and all that. I mean, you know, they're cuts, but you know, we're, we're how many million in debt? I mean, we yes, but in the past, ten, let's make this clear: in the past uh, ten years, reduced the deficit. Mr. O'Malley and the administration has reduced deficit from twelve million. To where it's at now. I don't know how much more of a plan you need when he's continually each year presenting us with a budget that has a lower deficit than the previous year, and the actuals are even coming in even lower. I mean, I don't know. I just, but, but you're insinuating that oh, let's deficit spend because we're okay with it. It's a credit card, and that's not the case. I respect your opinion. No, you don't. I would ask that you respect mine <laughs> and understand that this board member is against that. 
Okay. So, I would ask. Guess what? We're in a position right now where, again, we're, our, our budget is in a place right now. The only way, if we're going to get to a balanced budget, if that's what you want today, there's going to be some drastic impacts to teachers. We did students. not get here overnight. I understand. <laughs> I don't know if I need to talk to her to write it down. I am not in favor of deficit spending. <laughs> I don't know what I can do for you to make you understand that. And we don't know how to make you understand that right now. I, I, I think dialogue and I think continually to talk on this and I think not to beat down one another. I think we can come to a resolution. I really do. But you know, right now we're here. We've got to work on coming here. Right. And, and, and I'm totally in favor of that. We've spent a lot of time in this budget. This is something that's visited every month. Every I, I sense there's a lot of personal feelings with it and, and protecting administration, and, and that's fine. Mr. Canning, you know. you're on the finance committee. Right. You and Mr. Yes. Yep. I haven't seen one correction coming yes. out of your committee. We can't Not get one. it through. We can't get you're two-thirds of the no. committee. What do you mean you can't get it through? I, well, you know what? That's a funny statement that you just made because it's on tape for several meetings. I have said I'm in favor of not, or I'm not in favor of deficit spending. Basically. But so you have no plan for that. changing it. You just said I'm one board member. I shouldn't have a plan. We Where, should do where's it your idea? <laughs> you don't want to cut anything that affects students or, or staff. I'll you have it on it? Mr. O'Malley's desk tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. If you like, if I could have full board approval on that. I'd like to see it. We'll work on it over. Uh, yeah, I actually have two questions. Um, so I'll leave that. Yeah, excuse me. Can you uh, just a little bit louder? A little louder, okay. Yeah, uh, we can say first the first question is on the budgeted residence. And you mentioned the general state aid. You're expecting an increase there uh, because of direction from the legislature and, and the production of uh, But the largest item there is the other state grants. And so what's the nature of that increase? It's over $2 million. And how, how sure are we that we can hang our hat on it? Yes. Uh, the other component there that you're referring to in this year's fiscal budget, in comparison to last year, we included in terms of other state grants all funds for this. Last year, we just had the education funds only, so this encompasses some transportation funds, and that's making up the balance or the increase that we see there from last year. Can you say that again? It's yes. Transportation, transportation fund. fund is included in the FY17 and the FY16 uh, other state funds. That was just the education funds. It did not include the transportation. So we did include that this year. Okay, so it's not necessarily additional dollars coming from the state. It's just it's reflected Correct. in yeah. different ones. Reflected in and then the second question, a metric that I don't see in any of the budget presentations is how is our student enrollment uh, changing you know, over the course of these, these five years in their show? And what is our expenditure per student? And that's something that we can put together. Um, in previous years, we even had that included. Um, that's not something that we did include this year, but we can certainly put that together. But our enrollment has been steady and slightly increasing over the last several years. And then in terms of expenditures for students, that's something that I can put together and share out as well. Yeah, well, once we have the number of students, sure, each year it's easy to do as a division and to come up with the metric. The state aid is based on that also. Yes. Eight 
entertain a motion to adjourn the budget hearing. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Johnson and by Ms. Russell.
Gleason? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Campworth? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mr. Stearns? Aye. Uh, now time for a board recognition award. Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy to honor two of our resource officers at uh, Brumman High School, Officer Ryan Gully and Officer Ken Modro. If they could both come up. <laughs> These officers uh, work at Brumman throughout the week and they have for over 29 years. Officer Modro for 23 years and Officer Gully for the past six. Officer Gully's a graduate. He works for the Midlothian Police Department and Officer Modro for the Markham Police Department. Um, these two gentlemen work very hard with our students, with our staff, to make sure that we have a safe environment, both at every day at our school as well as activities, athletic events. You'll find these guys at dances, at different events throughout the whole year. And what they're doing is building relationships with our students through the day. Hopefully the relationships that will end in the in the streets at night, if they have, you know, reasons to talk and work with our students, they know them because of the time that they spend at Brumman High School with them. They have great relationships with our kids, our kids respect them. I think our kids learn from them as well as they learn from our kids also. So it's been a great relationship over the past 29 years. Um, Officer Modro here just a little bit longer than me, but he's been here watching me through every step and helping me get better every day, and I appreciate it. Officer Gully was a student here uh, under my watch for a while and he's done a great job taking on the role of uh, scheduling our officers and making sure that we always have what we need at Brown High School. It's a great environment for our students and our staff. So I want to thank both of these fine officers for the work that they do within our community and also within our school because they help to make Brown a better place for everybody as well as our community. Thank you guys. Help to improve the positive learning environment for the students of District 228 by the time and talent you share. Thank you for caring. Same thing, Officer. Okay. You have helped to improve the positive learning environment for the students of District 228 by the time and the talents you have shared. Thank you for caring. that they both have a fan club here today. So they brought uh, friends to represent them and share their success. We want to thank them for coming out. Uh, I'd just like to say something real quick. I'd like to thank the board. I'd like to thank um, the District 228 staff. And I'd like to especially uh, thank my principal, Dr. Dave Cabellas. <laughs> anything no matter the time of night and I very much there for the community and uh, it brought me up well as some of you were my teachers and residents <laughs> I've been around my entire life so I'm truly great, grateful and I appreciate it you know one thing I failed to mention is that anytime these guys are on my uh, my my phone and uh, phone calls go both ways to help keep our school safe and uh, they're available to help us help our students uh, have great experiences at Bremen High School so they do make Bremen a better place so thank you very much guys Good news report from uh, Richie Ryan. Richie's here for a double duty today. Richie's a senior, doing great things. Um, he's going to explain some of the good things going on at Brumman High School. Okay, 
those of you who came in late, I'd just like to say welcome to Germany for the 2016 2017 school year. And uh, first, for the good news, I'd like to report that uh, eight students having earned the AP Scholars Award, the Committee Award. From the 2016 school year, we have uh, Javier Corrubia. Corvorubius, I've been working at that name. We have Javier Corvorubius. We have uh, Deanna Pacheco, uh, Brooke Pachotto, Philip Powers, and Jennifer West. And then for my graduating year, 2017, we have myself. We've got Tyler Graham over there. And we have my other friend, Lenny File. And then a special award, AP Scholarship Distinction, which requires an average of four on all AP tests. My friend Damien Beheimer, who's now attending Illinois State University. Um, so, congrats to all the AP scholars on the of 2017. Uh, next, we have uh, the Bremen District TV uh, team, They're, who was led by Michael Lynch. They were honored by the Chicago Cubs for their uh, service announcement, Uptown CPR, which was a very uh, song Uptown Funk, meant to teach people about how to perform CPR. Uh, it was broadcast at Ridley Field after they were on it to a crowd of over 39,000 fans. And um, it teaches how to perform CPR. There's a number of music to it. And they are part of the Bremen High School, or Bremen District Communicative Arts and Technology Program. Uh, next, under athletics, we would like to honor the cross country team. Uh, who hosted the District 228 quad, the, the varsity team, and the Fresh South girls team. Both finished first and bought them travel trophies. Andrew here, thanks for playing. Yeah. And to finish off, I'd like to talk about the homecoming football game on September 9th. In spite of the weather, which was pretty bad, actually, um, <laughs> we were uh, we honored local first responders, and we uh, inducted some Hall of Fame members from the class of 1996. And the football game capped off at night with a score of 47-12, victory of the TF North. Uh, and uh, our three levels of football currently have combined records of 91 as they enter week four of the season. And that's all for the new report. Thanks, Richie. Great job. And uh, that class is very active in trying to participate within the high school still. And they put together a scholarship for uh, two students this past year. And I went and spoke to their, uh, their group on Saturday night before the homecoming dance. And they're looking to do it again to make it a lot larger. So they really want to see how that they can inspire other classes from Bremen to kind of do the same thing. So they're kind of an overzealous group in a good way. And they want to get back into the school as a class of 1962, looking to get back. And I kind of wanted to give them a little bit of a shout out because I think they're doing great things, realizing how great a place Bremen was to them and coming back and visiting during the last three homecomings and realizing that, wow, Bremen is still a great place for these kids today. And I think that's important for the board to know that you have a group of alumni that really care about this place. Wow. So I just want to share that. Thank you. Robert, you're not up there. Okay. Good evening. On behalf of Tilly Park High School, I would like to, I don't think they need any introductions because we've seen them many times, but introduce maybe to our guests tonight, uh, Hamza Shafi and Keja King. Students were able to compete in the 
batch and then I should be going to apply the RD gift card. On Saturday, we can do it against, on Saturday, we can do it against, on oh, Friday, we can do it against DF South. In the last two weeks, we've sat against the spider, we, we lost. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excuse me. The, the varsity cheerleading team um, on September 10th volunteered in Gigi's house, Gigi's <coughs> playhouse, to um, work with special needs kids and learn about what they go through every day. Um, a, uh, a cheerleader, Caitlin Johnson, had a fantastic time with people. She talked about her day saying, seeing the kids happy about their accomplishments, <coughs> and handing them their, them their medals to cheer me up for the rest of the day. I hope I can volunteer, volunteer there again. And also, our Lieutenant Clark Symphonic Band, our representation <coughs> on the state level winner of 2006, Mark, Mark of Essence, for the Foundation of Music and Education. This year, two, this year, 236 of the finest musical ensembles and the nation entered the competition. Their achievement is the <coughs> highest goal in our district. Hello, my name is Hamza Shafi, and I would like to talk about the athletics at Sydney Park High School. Yes. Tinley Park High School would like to congratulate the varsity cross country team for defending their title at the District 228 block. The girls made it back to back years as varsity champions. Six varsity runners finished in the top 10 of the varsity race. We would also like to congratulate and recognize the girls volleyball team with their success along with the record of 11 to 1 and with their conference record of 6 and 0. Tinley Park High School is also proud to celebrate the accomplishments of the Titan wrestlers since the opening of the school in 1961. With a new wrestling state qualifier sign that will be hung up in the school's gymnasium. Congratulations to the following members of the Titan family who will now be honored on the wrestling wall. We would also like to congratulate and recognize Mr. John Pfeffer who has been wrestling wrestling coach for 11 years now, and hopefully it will continue leading the success of the big part of wrestling and both four members of our Mathletes team. They will be uh, talking a little bit about Mathletes and presenting some good news from the Hill. Come on up, guys. Good evening. I am David Moore, senior. And I am Mr. Okachuku, senior. Our Mathletes coaches are Mr. Bob Lesko, Mr. Robert Fantosi, and Mr. Matthew Fenton. A Mathlete is a person who competes in Mathletes competitions. We are a group of mathematics exceptional students who compete against other schools in time and the world competition. Many people make fun of the word mathematics, but that's exactly what we are. Highly talented, trained mathematics specialists. We are the largest organization in the We have 76 members, making us larger than any varsity football team. We are a diverse group of individuals who have fun together, are successful, and have learned to work as a team. Last year, Hillcrest won first place in its first team math competition in 20 years, and this year we are confident that we will win another SSC math competition. This year, Hillcrest High School will celebrate its 50th anniversary by celebrating our high school Can you just talk a little bit louder? We're into the mic. Here we go. Hillcrest opens its doors in February of 1967. We will hear more about our planned events in the future. On September 7th, Hillcrest hosted a meet the team event. Parents, guardians, and family of Hillcrest students were invited to walk to school and schedule to meet teachers, staff, and administrators to join the visit. The event was an excellent opportunity for parents to make connections with faculty and staff and to understand the working with policy and procedures. We are also proud to report that Mrs. 
the Western Federal for receiving an award of recognition from the Illinois State Board of Education for the con contribution to the school community. And her nomination for Dr. Sam wrote, she is one of those teachers every principal would love to have in their building. She has touched the lives of our students academically, socially, and emotionally. To commemorate September 11, 2001, Hillcrest High School BPA students worked tirelessly in conjunction with the Country Club Hill Chamber of Commerce over the 9 11 weekend to create memorial ribbons. The ribbons were hung also on the flagpoles and all the time. In the front corridor, main office, main hallway, council's office, and the nurse's office board, the ribbons were our way of honoring the fallen from the horrific terrorist attacks of September 11th. Hillcrest also hosted a very successful NCAA information night on Wednesday, September 14th for students, parents, counselors, and coaches. Information was given regarding eligibility requirements, red shirting, recruitment, SAT, and ACT requirements, and after the expectations. Hillcrest is home of the Hawks. We are a school community with high expectations, high standards, we accept. Except no excuses and there are no exceptions. Thank you. that we've had um, in our four years of being here. We have a new um, director of activities, Ms. Jane Dempsey, and she made the prep assembly a lot more, um, a lot more like involved for the students. Uh, we kind of took on um, an idea that I know Bremen has, I don't know if any of the other schools have it, um, of like a class competition. So it got the students a lot more involved. We had more games um, and things like that. Um, so a lot of the students, like, they said that that was probably the most um, enjoyable homecoming that we've had so far. Um, Basically, uh, this year we started something new. It's called uh, Experience OFHS. It's a Twitter and Instagram page. I know um, on that page, I'm personally um, in charge of it. I started it up with um, our principal, Mr. Scora, and Ms. Jean Dempsey. And um, we decided to start this up. It basically keeps everybody on, like up to date on what's going on around the school. Everybody can hear about clubs that maybe they wouldn't have heard about otherwise. Um, and it definitely helps substitute for the fact that we don't have um, our uh, announcements in the morning happening over the intercom, intercom anymore. Instead, we are emailing the announcements out to each of the students, so their student emails, so they can hear about them that way. Um, so this Instagram and Twitter page kind of just keeps everybody up to date on what's going on around the school that they may not have been able to hear about before. And it seems to be working out. I've had somebody call to me and say, like, oh, who's running this page? And I said that was me, and they're, they're like, this page is awesome. I heard a lot about um, things that I wouldn't have heard about. They actually just said this to me yesterday. Um, so that's honestly really good news to hear that from just another student that's at the same, like, that's doing the same every single day. Um, so, uh, so far we've had people sign pictures to the page that we can post. They, like, um, we, um, we did like really good in this conference and this meet for our sport so they sent a picture of their team and then we posted up on the page so it's going really well we have a lot more recognition because of that um and then this friday we have our NBC flyover we have a lot of students that say that they're going so far so we're hoping that goes well something else that in student council we're trying to get going is a movie in the park so pretty much um, we were going to try to get a projector and um, a huge screen and so it's kind of everybody would come out to the football fields and we can have concessions and it would be a fun night, everybody can watch the movie. Uh, so that's something that we have going on right now. There seems to be a lot of changes going on in the school year this year and everybody seems pretty excited about it. So 
main distribution frames, which is in front of the uh, main office. And I actually got to see the software behind that, how you actually have to put all the the compute to the switches and wire it into the network. And yeah, that's mainly what I'm doing. So. over the summer as an intern at the ISN. And it was probably one of the most fulfilling um, opportunities I've had in all four years of my high school career. Uh, I'm also, like Tyler, I'm a STEM kind of, I'm a STEM major. I'm going to go into either computing or some kind of science in college. And um, yeah, I feel around with computers at home. I feel around with uh, different programs. I've taken computer science classes. But in reality, like, nothing really teaches you more than hands-on experience. And that's exactly what I got the guys out this year. Uh, one big thing was, um, as was talked about earlier, uh, there was a firewall replacement. I got to work with Mr. Donato to help set up uh, the firewall, both uh, physically, we had to install, we had to pull the old one uh, and install a new one. And then I also got to work with them setting up the new ACLs, or access control lists, which are the rules that allow certain kinds of traffic, like websites, or um, types of traffic, which is how internet, how internet services are provided. And it will block or allow them based on what we want to stop students from using. Um, after a few days of filling with that, we eventually, uh, we broke it down into things that were no longer used. We got to eliminate some of those, make them more efficient. We also got to add some new rules, preventing students from using more up-to-date things that we didn't know were around at the time. Um, I also get to learn a lot about network protocols, which is how traffic along the internet is passed. Um, it's really weird realizing how these things work, because before you learn about them, it's almost like the internet's just magic. It, you do something on a computer and it just works. And then breaking it down into um, various protocols and learning how exactly they work and how they transfer these small files, it makes a lot more sense now. It was really a worthwhile learning experience. I even got to do something at my house before my network was bare bones. And now, not only am I restricting certain things that my parents don't want my brother using on the internet, but um, <laughs> I'm also able to set up servers so we can play games or talk to my friends who are now in college. Uh, as a matter of fact, just last Sunday, we were using a server I set up to use voice chat while playing Dungeons and Dragons, so that was great. <laughs> Um, I also got to work on the new setup, uh, iPad setup tutorials. So when the freshman came in this year, instead of using the system last year, we used, um, we're trying to do it all on the iPads. It didn't quite work because Apple decided to stop us from creating more Apple IDs. So that's why it's taken like two or three weeks to set up all the iPads. But um, now that it's all been fixed, we have, I believe, 13 iPads left in the whole school to get set up. Um, and I actually got to continue working at the Ad Center during the school this year as an intern program. So my second period, I get to go to the Ad Center every day. And currently, Mr. Tanato and I are working on a Raspberry Pi project, which is a small computer about the size of a credit card. We're making a kiosk system for Oak Forest so that they can display daily announcements and various pictures that they've taken uh, across the school. Overall, this internship program, like I said, is one of the most beneficial things I've ever done at Burma High School, and I'm really glad that I got the opportunity to do this. Thank you.
wasted your summer, but every time I went back there, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Has this changed your plans for your future at all, this experience? Or help you pinpoint it? Yeah, I definitely considered going into like, system work, society work. So I think it's helped, helped me decide what I want to do. I used to think I wanted to go to physics, and now I'm sort of getting a bit more towards computer science. Do either of you have business cards? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Not yet. Um, I want to My computer freezes up all the time. Do you guys have questions or anything for me? Well done. Thank okay. you. Child Bereavement Leave Act has been changed. 
an amendment to the Victims Economic Security and Safety Act, uh, ABA training, residency determination, asthma action plan, we've actually already implemented that policy. Uh, the amendment to the self-administration of allergy and asthma, we've already uh, taken care of that. As with the um, Lally's Law, we've instituted that policy already. Uh, an amendment to the Interscholastic Athletic Organization Act, and an amendment to the Child Hunger Relief Act. There was also a lot of information about the transgender um, situation. Uh, there will be more, there, there are court cases that are pending. There was discussion about that. Um, if anyone is interested in seeing the full uh, printout of the presentation, I'm sure we can get that to the board. It's most interesting. Okay, um, I just wanted to read something real quick before we This is my yearbook, 1922. Many changes came to Bremen High School in 1919 to school year. The administration started many new policies in hope of improving the school and the attitude of those and associated with it. Um, the school bus was taking us to school back then. We have kids that are walking, and I don't know if our buses are filled to capacity, but we as a district pay for the bus. Where they carry one kid, whatever the rate is, I think when I last looked at it, it was like $60 per bus. But if there's room on a bus, we shouldn't be having them pick up all of our students and no extra additional charge. You know, they might not be close enough, just for safety reasons. And we just need to look at that. I wish I had the time out, otherwise, I would be going out check riding the uh, uh, bus to see how, what capacity is it filled. This bus company has taken and provided the service, no doubt. But they have had tens of millions of dollars. I mean, you're talking about this is like 35 years ago. And I don't know what we were doing before then. They have made a lot of money off of this district. We should be getting all that we can out there. We have a band member that's walking close by because they are too close and we need to be really looking at getting our kids back and forth to school. Um, we're about to spend about $75 million in improving our facilities. Uh, We have to look at our football program, especially because that's where most of the money is going to really benefit. Um, we can't have teams that are not competitive. We, we just can't have teams going one and eight and seven, stuff like that. And then saying that well, our kids are the reason why. That is not true. It's not true. We need to ask more of our coaches, maybe do a collaboration where all the coaches get together and figure out what is the best plan in moving this district to one of the top echelons out there. So that kids don't have to go down to Mount Carmel. If it's true, Mount Carmel uh, recruits all their players, but they don't win the state like every year. We, can, we have kids that have been playing this game since they were seven years old. And there's no reason why we should not be more competitive. 
nor should we be out here playing teams out there that come three hours away that really can't compete with us. We want somebody, a team like I went out to Oak Forest and play some team, I don't even mention their name, but they beat them bad. But you look in these stands across there, there's only 12 people on the stands. I mean, at four dollars a pop out there, then we're looking at 48 dollars that was collected. That wouldn't even pay for the coaches, uh, the referee fees. Why would we do that when we have a team like HF right down the street? We'll probably bring about a thousand people to there. Add to our school and something more positive. We're not playing teams that that you know that we know that we can beat. They don't. That team that we beat badly over there, don't for us. They're not going to come up to the to the concession stand and help our booster club out by buying that cheap bread. <coughs> We've got to take. Real steps. If we're going to go out here and spend this kind of money, we need to get the most out of it. Our kids should be coached by the best possible coaches that we have. When I went and I pulled up all the way back to 2004. Max Prep. I'm asking the board to <coughs> read right across, across here. And it gives you all the information in there. Um, this this happened to be Hillcrest from 2008, 2009. They had uh, uh, Ernie Sutton, and his overall record was six and five in conference four and two. The national ranking was four thousand and sixty-two. Now national rankings is is going to determine whether or not. A college coach is going to come out here and, and scout your, your kids. So we hurt ourselves when we have high numbers. Our state ranking was 168. We got to hold our, these people accountable and coach our kids. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I was not present at the last meeting. I just wanted to say that I really appreciated um, uh, hearing from my absence. Had some I attended the uh, first day of the Teacher Institute, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I, um, especially like the thing I engage, I empower. Um, I, can't remember. <laughs> um, I was able to attend the math um, portion, the fine arts, the special uh, education, and the um, social studies, I believe, uh, sections. Uh, I was impressed in how they're incorporating technology into the curriculum. Uh, I was uh, very impressed about the presentation, the various uh, resources on the internet that this teachers could use. Um, I was speaking with a lot of different teachers and uh, listening to their concerns and interests and how they were excited about the new school year. Um, the fine arts department, uh, headed by Mr. Anderson, um, had a lot of different technology that I'm, uh, that, and he also mentioned about a new room that was in Hillcrest uh, High School. Um, where the teachers are getting to collaborate and get to write their own books. And uh, I got to actually tour that room. Um, what's, the, what's the name of it? The curriculum room. It's the curriculum room. Okay, great. No. <laughs> but I was impressed by it. It has, um, how it has the Apple um, computers as well as the um, Android computers and how they are able to actually write. And I believe that's going to be in each building. Um, that's the only spot. Oh, that's the only spot. Okay, great. Well, um, how they're incorporating the writing materials into the curriculum. Um, 
Also, I was very excited about watching the videos. The special education did a wonderful presentation on, um, they did a video presentation about uh, special education and uh, themselves and, and saying basically like a welcome. And I really, really, really uh, liked that presentation, um, how they, they put that together so well. They teamed up, they collaborated, and did a really good job on that as well. So um, I'll talk to you for that, that uh, allowing us to, the opportunity to um, come to the Teacher Institute today. Um, also, um, this is on community service. Uh, I was I attended the um, Markham Back to School event, and uh, I noticed two people were here. They're not here, but um, high school track coach Arkita Edison uh, donated her time and services uh, to the uh, event, where she came and she taught uh, young people how to. Uh, some of the skills that you would need to be in track and getting them interested and let me tell you these students were so hyped I mean they got me like hyped and thinking I could <laughs> do something <laughs> thinking you know like uh, getting interested in track so they were enthusiastic and they had great team support they really supported everybody and said okay let's get it started and let's you know let's uh, you can do it or whatever so she was able to uh, in a, a matter of a short time, uh, different skills that you could learn to track and had of many of the young people interested in track. They were looking forward to uh, doing those skills. So hats off to Arpita Edison um, for um, taking out the time to spend in the community. Also, I got a report from um, several students and parents. Um, I want to also um, recognize um, uh, and thank Mr. Ryan Blackwell um, for going the extra mile to teach and believe in his students and uh, he, I believe he had a surplus of students and uh, there are some students that he saw the potential in them to do well and so he wanted to make sure that they did well and just stood behind them and they really appreciated it. Um, <coughs> Um, the parents did want me to, to uh, let the board and the community know that we want to thank you because um, a couple of students that have been struggling, they said since second grade, and came home and told their parents, I really feel I can achieve and do well this year. And the parents said, why? Why did they, why did they feel that? And these are um, uh, from Bremen, uh, students from Bremen. They, they responded with, He's actually teaching me, Mom. He's actually teaching me. And, and I'm really enjoying being in the class and learning. And he said, I really like school. I can say that I like school. So that was a good freshman experience uh, from uh, quite a few uh, freshmen in the area. I talked to a lot of the students. Um, and this was absolutely outstanding. Also in math, um, Mr. William Flood, also I want to um, acknowledge him. He, uh, the new appreciation for another student came to me and told me uh, who had not been doing well on his assessments and different things like that, scared of taking tests, scared of math and different things, um, actually uh, brought about confidence in the students and uh, helped, uh, let me see, the, at first the student wasn't making good grades uh, or didn't make a good grade on the assessment and now they're making uh, one of the highest grades. Class. So um, his confidence level boosted and also their achievement and it's uh, notated by the grades that they have been making, which are A's. They've been making A's. They've gone to not having confidence and that's a lot. Um, also, I didn't, I wasn't in the parade, but I did go to the parade. My children and my uh, has uh, my children with me and my niece, uh, they wanted to actually catch the candy. <laughs> so uh, I did go in the parade, they said, let's catch candy. So they are enthusiastic about that every year being able to go. So we went to the Oak Forest uh, Parade and Homecoming game um, and they had a blast. Uh, I saw, was able to see a lot of the community coming out there and future uh, high schoolers that were looking forward to going to high school. So, um, 
that is basically my report with uh, a lot of good news. Uh, and I t also spoke with one of the um, couple of freshmen. They had like a lot of apprehension. Oh, this is the first time in high school. Um, some that achieved great things and things. And so uh, one of the things that they they appreciated was the band, and they were looking forward to math needs. Uh, so it's good to hear that report that there were 76 students interested in math athletes. And so now that they, they said that they, they did join math athletes and they are having the time of their life. So um, that's some great, great news from many of the freshmen. And on uh, just the way of announcements, uh, uh, the ISB will have a meeting on the 26th, I believe it's October. Um, and um, acknowledging uh, participation in uh, ISB and that is all. That's all I have. I um, just want to take a few minutes to uh, wish everyone good luck on their homecoming weekend. I know we had a couple homecomings last weekend. Um, definitely want to wish our football teams good luck. Um, with that in mind, I do feel I just want to remind everyone to be courteous of our visitors, respectful of our officials, and especially our police officers and security staff. Um, they're there to protect the students, and um, I just want to make sure that everyone keeps that in mind as they're attending the football games. Um, on another note, and I don't know if any of my fellow board members had a chance to listen to the Finance Committee meeting um, recordings yet or anybody in the audience, um, there was a reference during the meeting Larry had referred to me as a turncoat, and at first I didn't even, was not familiar with this term, and, and after I realized what it was, I felt that I needed to address it, and also address some other matters, and just make my fellow board members aware. But I feel the need to remind everybody that the school board, it, the school board member is a nonpartisan position. Referencing the school board member as a turncoat, again, just exemplifies Larry's determination to build a divide between school, member, school board members rather than working together to achieve a common goal. This is something that will be taught in, in, in training, you know, and, and when you become a new board member, they, they send you a training. And that's one of the things that they emphasize, is you've got to learn to get along together, you've got to learn to work together for a common goal. And I think that's what many of us are, are trying to do. There is no switching of sides or beliefs. Today, not only do I, but all board members believe and strive for fiscal responsibility, student achievement, transparency, and accountability. These goals or missions, as your political action plan refers to them as, are already incorporated in the District 228 policies and practices. There is nothing different or unique about your goals. The only thing different is your unethical strategies that deliberately defy the very policy which we as board are supposed to uphold. Your gross misunderstanding of the board's roles and responsibilities, Robert's rules, financial management and planning, the micromanagement of the administration and staff, and your blatant disregard for the truth or facts that manipulate data to satisfy your personal agenda. On various occasions, both Larry and Kim have violated several board policies in, in, in doing such acts, such as taking coaches out for dinner and making promises that they do not have the authority of, contacting the media, altering district material, including surveys completed by teachers, sending letters to staff emphasizing personal policies, and demanding a deficit reduction plan against the direction of the whole board. On Monday, September 12th, the Finance Committee adjourned at 8, at 8 16 p.m. Both, Carrie and, both Kim and Larry met privately in Larry's car for over 90 minutes in the parking lot of the administration center. Since Larry and Kim constitute a quorum of the finance committee, I have reason to believe that there was an open meeting violation act, an open meeting act violation. And to support my position, you can reference the almost identical emails that were sent to Dr. Kendall at 10.08 and at 10.53 the, the same night within your board packet. Kim has also been providing directives, requesting and receiving itemized bills for legal fees for over a year. She has not provided any sort of report to the finance committee or board regarding inappropriate billing, financial management, or use of legal services. Without any disclosure from the committee as to the intent of this request, I would like to understand the scope for this work and how the results are going to be utilized by the, and be communicated to the board. Again, as I emphasize that there are several policies which are being violated here. The first one has to do with 2.8 and the statement of ethical conduct in front of the board member. Micromanagement of the district schools and or personal manipulation of its employees by an individual board member according to his or her own personal agenda, Eric, agenda to his or her, to his or her pros of authority, which no individual board member either has or is authorized to exercise. 
under, undermines the, legit, the legitimate authority of the district superintendent and Ill, illegitimately interferes with both the administration and the educational process of the district. <clears throat> Sections 210 and 2.140. Detrimental effect upon the relationship between the administrative, administrative personal, personnel and the board as a whole, between administrators and their staff. Going on to 2.8, exhibit number one. Again, this is the code of conduct for board members. Uh, I, will represent all, I will represent all school district constituents honestly and equally and will refuse to surrender my responsibilities to special interests or partisan political groups. Uh, board membership for the personal gain or publicity. I will take no private action that might compromise the board or administration and will respect the confidentiality of privileged information. I will strive for a positive working relationship with the superintendent. Clarifying the district's purpose, district the direction and goals and monitoring the district's performance. School district governance. This is 2.10. Official actions by the school board may only occur at a duly called and legally conducted meeting at which a quorum is physically present. Board of Education, Board Superintendent Relationship, this is 2.130. Uh, the Board Superintendent Relationship is based on a mutual respect for their complementary roles. The relationship requires clear communication of expectations regarding the duties and responsibilities of both the board and the superintendent. 2.140, communication to and from the board. If contacted individually, board members will refer to the person to the appropriate level of authority, except in unusual situations. Board, members question, board member questions or communications to staff about programs to be channeled through the superintendent's office. Board member will not take individual action that might compromise the board or the district. Thank you. Um, I'd like to respond to that. Thank you, Ms. Resler, for bringing some of that up. And I do apologize for calling you a turncoat. Um, but that was very unprofessional of me. Um, but yeah, I'd like to divulge our, me and Ms. Campworth's conversation, although I don't have to because it's only two board members uh, talking, but I will divulge uh, what was the main topic of that discussion was, we could not understand why your husband and your son was in a very sensitive and critical place in our district office, and that was our superintendent's office. Um, that disturbed myself, and I will not speak for Ms. Canforth, but I, you know, our conversation, we were very appalled to see that. Um, so that was the nature of our conversation. There's, very, there's critical records in the administration office that um, does not belong uh, being looked at. And I'm, not, I'm not saying that they were, but you know, things like that happen. And, and, and I was in a building, Mr. O'Malley was in a building, Ms. Campworth was in a building, and if something down the line ever got out, you know, people would look at who was in the building. So it had to be known that your husband and your son were taking, and I believe Mr. Kendall said, or Dr. Kendall said that they were doing homework in his office. You know, we have many libraries within our township that they can go and do homework at. I just didn't understand why it had to be in Dr. Kendall's office. When we also have a conference room in the ad center where that could have been appropriate too if they were waiting for you so that was our, our 90 minute conversation and i highly doubt it was 90 minutes um uh, so i just wanted to be very clear what that conversation was about but i do when apologize for excuse me, I, I do apologize for calling you a turncoat well, i do have to say mr white mrs russell's husband and son was in the in dr kendall's office I would expect that anyone that's in the administrative center during a public meeting would be attending the public meeting or not be in the building unsupervised. Um, they're not board members, he wasn't a board member, he's not under any oath, and while I can't um, quote any specific policy related to that, I'm sure it's some sort of violation. As for your question to my inquiry on legal bills, I am a board member and I approve the bills sitting at these meetings each month. I have a right to look at each one of these bills and what they are just as you have the same right. Looking at the bills and taking copies of the homework, what would you do? I don't take copies of the homework, Mr. O'Malley provides them to you. You have personal copies. What's personal about it? Mr. O'Malley copy that I don't have. Well, you can ask reviewing for it. the bills is not an issue, it's that you specifically request the itemized legal bills every month for the past year, which you're right, you have every right to look at it, but I'd like to understand what is the scope of your research. 
uh, understanding the amount of the bills. They fluctuate, and I'd like to see what we're being charged for. It's fiscally responsible to vote accurately on what we're being charged for. I, I have to say, when I read the emails from Mr. Candy, this is uh, can't work without Mr. Ressler and uh, Matt Ressler being in Dr. Kendall's office, I was shocked that they were concerned. I mean, this is a but you were have a concern thing. if my husband was in Dr. Kegel's office no. or my school or my kids? So we should open up to the community? That's a whole different thing, Larry. That's a whole different thing. If a family member drives you to a board meeting and has to wait for the meeting to go on, doesn't have to sit in the meeting with a five-year-old. I mean, that's just the superintendent's right office is a very sensitive is office. It? I would we think so. We have janitors so. in there every day. But they are already told me up into the stories. And how is, if you had this concern though, you went and talked to them up yourselves for an we hour. We couldn't believe it. Rather than <laughs> say, hey, Christine, I have a problem. We couldn't Is believe it. I it needed to go to the superintendent. I think it's Chris, you could have called him. Tom was right there. You could have addressed it right then. How, would, how is he having a private conversation with him? I couldn't believe that we had non board members doing whatever it was in Dr. Kendall's office, and Dr. Kendall explained that it was they were doing homework at his table. I still Did Dr. Kendall, Kendall give them permission to be in that office? Not that I'm aware of. Did you? I don't know. I, I was not there. Mr. O'Malley was there. Um, and, and I support Mr. O'Malley's decision to go okay. to the office. Uh, Ms. Russell, are you a taxpayer? Is your husband a taxpayer in this district? Yes. All right, then. Thank you. Let's move on to the next thing. So any taxpayer could be in the superintendent's office? Absolutely. Unsupervised? Unsupervised, it doesn't matter. Mr. O'Malley took responsibility as an employee of the district. He gave him permission to be in. Okay, well, the board would have to answer to any inquiries that the public had if anything were to have come out of that. Is there something that you're accusing my husband and my five-year-old? No, right. nothing at all. Okay, just making sure. Thank you. I would just ask that if you took me up until I did, deal with it any time. You know, Tom was there. We did. At what time, uh, Ms. Reser, what were the times that we emailed uh, Dr. Kendall? You stated no, Christine was right there. You could have said, hey, I have a problem. No, we decided the, the appropriate action that we needed to take and it was to alert our superintendent in which we employ. So. He said we. He said we. And I'd also like to point out that you and Mrs. Stanford are a uh, quorum of the finance committee. So if you met following the meeting. No, we that's adjourned. That's a textbook that's open meeting that violation. Yeah. I'm that's sorry, we were adjourned. Doesn't matter. Well, you go to the training, and I know you've been. No. What did they show? The conversation in the parking lot following the meeting. No, I'm sorry. That meeting was adjourned. Textbook. It doesn't matter. Textbook. It doesn't that was adjourned, and we became two board members. No, you're a majority three. of a quorum of the finance committee. You're wrong. Well, I think we should file you're, something with the board. Go for it. I love. I love. Okay, do it. I can take care of that. Go for it. I think that's the bigger. On September 8th, I told hey, oh, excuse me. Course, what, yes. what was, uh, how do you know what the conversation was? I just divulged what the conversation was. We were concerned about the district's safety having nine employees or board member in it's our superintendent's district. office. Business. That is out of line. It's we have no proof we're that we're talking any district. He just said what you were we're discussing. Just about we're not discussing no, no. the breach of she security. He just said what you were discussing. It's district business. The breach of security in Dr. Kendall's That's office? district business, isn't you it? We were right. discussing where you were going to lunch tomorrow. That's a violation. No, we discussed where we were going to dinner. <laughs> we were a violation. <clears throat> so on September 8th, I joined Oak Force as they inducted Colonel Kevin Mann into their Hall of Fame as the spirit of Oak Force inductee. He gave quite an inspirational speech to the students in attendance and afterwards <coughs> uh, spent time with the cross country teams. Even though know, he was invited so that we could honor him, he made a donation to the Morse High School. Um, well, I was thinking about what to say. I was having a hard time coming up with a word. Um, through his career in the military, Colonel Manton has worked with several presidents. He's the only American to have been honored by the government of Korea. Is that right, Dan? Um, it's quite impressive to know that we have such a distinguished <coughs> among our alumni. And whoever wrote up your equipment support used the word astounding, and that. Exactly the word I, I was looking for. 
Um, and of course, homecoming football games, there's a problem with the lights. All of a sudden, the lights went out. I just want to congratulate anyone and everyone who had anything to do with that game. The decision was made to move the game over to Tinley, and it, it was made to look like it was so effortless and it was just so easy. Everybody just went over the game. I think the game started inside of 10 minutes. Uh, very impressive. Um, I also attended Oak Forest Class Competition and Assembly, and like the young lady here said, this is the first time I don't remember how many years that Oak Forest has actually had class competitions. And over and over and over again, even into the ninth game, the students were saying, this is the best homecoming ever. And um, how they can see it getting better and better as, as their years go on. I was also extremely touched to see how the football team responded to their manager and made sure that he was recognized there in the assembly. I also attended Tilly Parks Assembly class competition and Blyman's is is always great as well to every year. Um, while while talking about home game football, <coughs> probably eight parents from Tinley, I can't remember how many from Oak Forest, again, just wish that the cheerleaders rec recognize the importance that they play in the game, that they are a motivating factor, and wish that they were more involved. Um, I received an email from a parent that was concerned about our QSCB bond. His concern is that it's just for athletes and athletes are the only one that will benefit from anything. I did respond back saying that these are capital improvements that we would be making. Uh, I just have one comment on your e um, email from uh, a concerned parent. I was also copied on that email and reached out to ask if you or Dr. Kendall responded um, to the parent. Dr. Kendall said that you had put the response together and I asked her for a copy of it. You said you were going to share it with the full board. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still, I didn't listen to that. I will reply. Okay. You'll share it with us then? Because he since replied. Have you replied back? A second time? A second time. No, I have not yet. You know, I have, I have a concern with that because I didn't get that email. I, you get it? Mr. Turner, did you get it? It was addressed to Larry Kim and myself. But, and Dr. Kim. But it's about district business, so maybe it's time we had one email address for the entire board so we'd all get it instead of certain individuals. Because again, I mean, you know, we're kind of in the dark here. We didn't even know what's going on. Well, and, and according to all the policy, we're not even supposed to reply as an individual coming from the full board. And the full board didn't discuss Ms. Stern's reply. Um, I assumed discussed. Dr. Kendall was going to send the reply. So I didn't have any. I didn't have any input on the reply. I didn't reply on it. But uh, I didn't know what your reply was, and I didn't have any input on it. So again, yeah, yeah, my you should consider now. changing individual board member emails to one email. Put that on the agenda. But isn't that a violation of the? of some act if you contact them you're having a board there are other districts that do just don't apply we certainly should check with our attorneys yeah oh, we well no don't we change the email yeah. it's all money seven yeah. 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 yeah all right finance committee miss wrestler <coughs> I just got, I just got briefed, I'm sorry. Okay. Can you get any more? What was the problem? I'm sorry, could you repeat yeah. Just one more. Yeah. Um, she was at one, sorry, I'll just email her for that. She wasn't. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, there was a concern from the parent that the um, bond was just that blood and base. It's not one of the additional spending money on things that only benefit for that one. All right, thank you. All right, Finance Committee met on Monday, September 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, called the meeting to order at 7. The president were myself, Larry Kim, and Mr. O'Malley. Guests were none. There, uh, there was no... Um, 
for new business, we have <coughs> the September bills, interest funds, and deposits. The committee reviewed and discussed the September bills, interest expenditures, and deposits. The finance committee, along with the superintendent, is recommended to report approval of, this, of the August bills, addendum to bills, interest expenditures, and deposits. Career Development System CDS bills. The Finance Committee reviewed the CDS September bills totaling $14,078.78. The Finance Committee, along with the Superintendent, is recommending full board approval of the CDS September bills as presented. The Finance, the Career Development System legal budget. The Finance Committee, along with the Superintendent, is recommending full board approval of this budget. District 228 legal budget for 2016-2017. The Finance Committee discussed the district's 2016-2017 budget. Mr. O'Malley provided a presentation to the committee regarding the budget that included some challenges to the district that may be faced with the, within the near future. Some of the challenges include unreliable funding from the state pending legislation that would freeze the district's ability to increase the tax extension. The district continues to reduce expenditures and maintain manageable deficit while continuing to offer quality programs for all students. As a result of the continued fiscal responsibility, the district will not have to complete the ISBE's three-year deficit reduction plan. The committee asked the number of questions pertaining to fund balance and district's financial position for future years. Mr. O'Malley explained this district's position and, and discussed the projected fund balance for the district. The superintendent is recommending full board approval of the district 228-2016-2017 legal budget. Resolution working cash abatement. The committee discussed the resolution required to complete the necessary transfer of funds pertaining to the budget. The necessary resolution will be acted on the board acted on at the board meeting. The finance committee, along with the superintendent, is recommending full board approval of this resolution. Fall paper bid. The finance committee reviewed and discussed the paper bid. The district receives bids from the district received bids from six vendors with a low bid from Midland Paper coming in at $21,310.74. Superintendent, along with the Finance Committee, is recommending full board approval of the low bid item, low bid from Midland. <coughs> winter Athletic Bid. The Finance Committee discussed the Winter Athletic Bids totaling $31,574.99. The Committee agreed that the low bids would be accepted for the items specified by each school. The Superintendent, along with the Finance Committee, is recommending full board approval of the low bids. Next meeting is Tuesday, October 11th at uh, 7 p.m. This meeting is being conducted on Tuesday due to the holiday and the Monday. The meeting was adjourned at 8.16. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, teaching and learning met on September 13th at 6.30 p.m. Present were myself, Ms. Stearns, and Dr. Williams. Absent was Mrs. Gleason. There were no comments from the public. Uh, we discussed additional section requests. Since the last committee meeting, Dr. Williams has added one section of ELL American Literature at Bremen due to students' access scores and the need to be in a self-contained ELL English course. A section of introduction to English was also added at Bremen, as well as the current sections were overloaded. This year, Illinois schools will administer the SAT to all juniors on April 5th. To accommodate the change in testing, the district is recommending moving up two SIP days. The April SIP day will move from April 26th to April 5th, the March sit day will move from March 15th to March 1st in order to maximize instructional time. The committee will recommend these changes to the full board. Class size review. Dr. Williams reviewed class sizes at each high school after the 10 day drop. While there are a few courses with class sizes of plus three, in most of the cases they are single sections. All other courses are either within the window or only over by one or two students. On average, 12% of the courses are above the window, 30% are below the window, and 58% are within the windows. The committee will look at second semester class sizes in November and determine if additional sections are needed. The Bremen Palms team is requesting to attend the United Dance Association Nationals in Orlando, Florida in February of 2017. While the trip is dependent upon their qualifications from competition in November, the team needs time to fundraise for the trip. The committee is recommending the overnight field trip request to the board. Dr. Williams shared with the committee progress on the rollout of EvaluWise to the staff. This is the new evaluation <coughs> software being used by teachers and administrators to conduct observations. Positive feedback has been received by both teachers and administrators, 
as it is easy to use and is beginning to save time. Tuesday, November 8th at 6.30 at the Ad Center, and the meeting adjourned at 6.45 p.m. Thank you. Personnel met on September 12th. Uh, Mr. Cannon, Mr. Osler, and myself were there. Dr. Guidance presented the following certificate and staff recommendations for Brahman and approval of the employment of a psychologist, a part-time English teacher, a part-time science teacher, a learning center facilitator, a project manager, a math tutor, a bilingual tutor, a science tutor, and a Delta Knight counselor. For Tilly Park, the approval of the employment of a project manager, a full-time substitute, and a student assistant. Railcrest, the acceptance of the resignation of student assistants, and the approval of the employment of a learning center facilitator, two student assistants, and a Delta Knight counselor. Vote for the approval of the medical leave request for a guidance counselor and the approval of the employment of a math teacher, a nurse, an English doctor, a math tutor, a full-time substitute, and a bilingual tutor. The committee agreed to make these recommendations to the full board for approval. Dr. Guidance then presented the following educational support and <coughs> personnel recommendations. Providing the approval of the employment of a special ed aid, for Tilly Park, the approval of the employment of a special ed aid and a part-time weekend custodian, we all press the approval of the employment of a part-time weekend custodian and special ed aid, and the acceptance of the resignation of a special ed aid. So of course, the approval of the employment of a part-time weekend custodian and the acceptance of the resignation of a part-time weekend custodian. At the district level, the improvement of the employment of a certified HVAC maintenance employee. The next meeting will be November 14th at 6.30 at the Ad Center, when I have October. And we have adjourned at 7 Who is this, Mr. O'Malley? Thank you, Mr. Stearns. Board member, item 10.1 pertains to our monthly bill, the addendum to those bills, payroll, and CBS bills. Finance committee, along with the superintendent, is recommending these to the board this evening. So moved. Second. Thanks, Russell. Second by Mr. Johnson. Any discussion? Ms. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mrs. Jones? <coughs> Aye. Mrs. Cambridge? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Item 10.2 pertains to the district's 2016-17 legal budget as presented in the budget hearings this evening. Superintendent is recommending this budget to the full board for approval. So moved. Second. Um, yeah, I would like to make a statement about the budget. Um, in reviewing the minutes of the uh, finance committee, I noted that under budget it said the recommendation was only coming from the superintendent, not the committee. When I inquired about this, I was told that Mr. Canning and Mrs. Camport were not going to support the passage of the budget, and so I would like to make the following points. Um, July 1 is the beginning of our new budget year. Without audited balances from the previous year, the board approved a tentative budget, which allows us to spend up to 50% of the prior year budget. The finance director and the finance committee began building the new budget in June. The state allows us until September 30th to adopt the new budget. If one is not adopted and filed, by October 31st, the state can instruct the county clerk not to levy taxes for the district, which means we wouldn't get any revenue. Although the preparation of the budget has been ongoing since June, Mr. Canning and Mrs. Campworth, who are both members of the Finance Committee, do not want us to approve this budget. Mr. Canning says he wants a deficit reduction plan, but neither he nor Mrs. Campworth have offered a suggestion that would cut $3.4 million from this budget. On page 19 of the state budget document, it says that a deficit reduction plan is only necessary if expenses from the previous year exceed revenues by an amount greater than or equal to one-third of the fund balances for education, transportation, operation, and maintenance, and working cash. At the end of fiscal year 16, these designated funds had a balance of $46 million. The proposed budget has a deficit of $3.5 million, which is much less than the 15 plus million that would be required in order for us to be forced to do a deficit reduction plan. Mr. Canning likes to say and has said to me many times that our budget is not balanced because of poor leadership on the part of Dr. Kendall and Mr. O'Malley. In fact, the opposite is true. 
when Dr. Kendall and Mr. O'Malley took over in 2007, the district's financial designation from the state was early warning, just one step away from watch. Under their leadership, we have moved through review to recognition for the past five years. Prior to their leadership, salaries were growing at a rate of 6.3% annually. In the past five years, salaries have increased by less than 1%. It's not 1% a year, 1% total. Prior to their leadership, non-salary expenses were growing at a rate of 5.2% annually. Since 2010, the rate of increase is less than 1.4%. Transportation fund, the operation and maintenance funds have moved from negative balances in 2007 to positive balances in the recommended budget. A change of over $1.3 million. Good. These things were accomplished with direction from the board to continue to provide our students with all the opportunities that currently exist. They were done while our equalized assessed value dropped 28%. They were done while the state withheld $9.5 million in general state aid since 2012. It was done through shared sacrifice by every department and every employee of this district. So now we come to the adoption of the 2017 recommended budget, which shows a deficit of $3.4 million in an $80 million budget. We have balanced all the funds except for the education fund. I wonder what Mr. Canning and Mrs. Camport would like to recommend. The only thing that is left affects students. Should we deprive students the opportunity to take more than six classes? Should we cut electives? Should we cut teachers? Should we increase class size or cut 180 classes? Should we cut out extracurricular activities? These are the choices that are left. So what's this really about? All this talk of deficit reduction is grandstanding for Mr. Candy's re-election campaign. It's worth noting that while Mr. Canning voted yes for fiscal year 14 and fiscal year 15 budgets, which had projected deficits of 5.1 and 5.2 million dollars, he cannot support this deficit of 3.4. Although he voted no last year on the 15, uh, fiscal year 16 budget, he's not offered one significant cost cutting suggestion. It's easy to say no, but more difficult to offer solutions. Although I am also up for re-election, I realize that the adoption of the 2017 budget is not a political game. It's a sound business decision that is necessary to serve our students, our staff, and our taxpayers. I refuse to play games with the future of our kids. Thank you. All the cards? Gleason. Aye. Mr. Canning? No, we can do better. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Camworth? Well, I agree we're making improvements to move forward. I agree that there can be more effort made, so my vote is no. Ms. Stearns? Aye. We make effort every month. Is that a yes or no? Aye. Item 10.3 pertains to the 2016-2017 CBS legal budget as the administrative district. The finance committee along with the superintendent are recommending this to the full board this evening. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? I'd just like to point out that this is 75% less than last year's presentation. Item 10.4 pertains to our resolution for the working cash abatement. This has been reviewed by the Finance Committee and along with the Superintendent for recommending this to the full board. So moved. Moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Ms. Wessler. Any discussion? Again, this is an example. You want to talk about deficit reduction. Mr. O'Malley brought this process to the district 
prior to him being the finance director, we didn't do it this way. Bids are put out to multiple companies, and each individual product is cherry picked. We don't give the whole winter athletic bid to one company. That saves us thousands of dollars every year. And as Mrs. Stearns pointed out, we do these things routinely. If we're not doing, I, I wish we could do more, but if we're not doing enough, why are we recognized by the state as doing, why do you think we're recognized by the state as doing the shooting problem? I was just directing it. Is that a meeting? Yeah. Well, you, you voted the company that uh, Mr. Nelly and the team. Well, there's a formula, obviously, that the state uses. And, you know, if I can refer that to Mr. O'Malley, if your working cash is at a certain level versus your deficit, you win an award. <laughs> so it, you can elaborate on that, Mr. O'Malley, if you'd like. It's a, I'm, I'm just asking, I, I, I'm just curious. I was curious to know if you don't think that if our school board is doing enough, then why would we want to be able to receive all the funds that the state provides? I'm going to refer, refer you to that one. No, I'm, I'm talking, you know, you said you're not doing enough, but the state, no, I, being rec you know, we're recognized by the state. I'm going to go home and, and redo the plan that Mrs. Gleason would like to see because I wasn't going to present anything because I would be seen as working alone. But now that I had permission from the senior board member to present a plan, I'll present that plan. Okay, so you could present it at a meeting. I said you could show it. Different than well, what do you want? Do you want to present it? Do you want it hand delivered? Do you want it UPS? How do you want it? <laughs> you tell me. I don't want to see it on the agenda until we review it. Okay. okay. But I mean, I know the two of you have stated that. I, I'm just, I was curious. It's nothing against you. I'm just wondering why. Why do you think? Well, that we're that past that item anyway on the agenda. We're down at one or another. I know we're voting on it, but I'm just wondering why. Why do you think? Because I know you made the comment and then we moved on, but I just think we're running a deficit. It's just not fiscally responsible when there's other areas to be looked at. All I'm asking for is those areas to be looked at. That's all. If there's other ways to improve our budget and reduce our deficit, I'm asking for us to look at it. But everyone's closed mind to looking at any other ideas. That's, that's the impression that's not true. true. I'm well, just asking a question, and, and that wasn't to make you get defensive. Yeah, defensive about it. I'm just asking no, a simple question. That's fine. You can I'm ask questions. Questions. You're entitled to that, obviously. And I'm just asking why. I mean, it's just something that I would like to see the goal to be looked at. But I can't set that goal because I'm one of them. Because I'm so bad at so it needs to come from the full board, but the full board is not in favor of directing it. Because the deficit is coming down. Mm -hmm. But we're moving money from just another fund to put into another fund. That's how the board is now. That's how it's a deficit. What, what do you think the working cash fund is for? What item are it's, we on? What do you think the working cash no, fund I just, is for? I have a, I had a question. It's not that, that, that we're on I'm still on finance. So that's why I asked the question. You're still in finance, so I'm asking. I'm still I answered your question. I'm sorry. I, did I answer your question? You know, I'd, I'd like to put one footnote onto that, and, and Mrs. Gleason has asked, where's my plan? I don't get paid the kind of money that our, you know, our finance director gets paid, our superintendent. I get no money for being on the board, okay? So these plans should be presented to us so we could look at them and see if they make sense for our district. Okay. I don't get I don't get paid to do this. Okay. Do every month. I mean, you look at these things month after month after month, and there's a reduction or a holding of a contract. No, no. that's a deficit. You just said, Larry, bring me your your deficit you reduction you plan. I want to know what your suggestions okay. are. Larry, if you don't like what we've already done. Larry Cleaning does not get paid. Nor to does do Evelyn Gleason. That. That's right. So I would ask that the full board take a look at asking our finance director to come up with some plans. Okay, so we could take a look at them. That's all. I, I don't see what's so hard about that. 
I, I really don't. Can we write in a vote? Vote on it right now? No. 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 Uh, right, Mr. O'Malley, are you doing everything that you can, you think you can do within your power? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every year when we review things, we we're constantly looking at ways that we can do more with less. And uh, we, we've been reducing things, and it gets to a point where you can only squeeze so much out of turn up in the end without having to look at other options. And some of those other options have been talked about tonight, but and those are things that have been brought up in the past, but the board has opted not to go down that road, and we've opted to maintain a manageable deficit. Not only have we maintained that manageable deficit, even during these difficult financial times, we've significantly reduced that deficit during these difficult times. And, and the goal is moving forward, again, Ms. Russell pointed out, there's nobody in this room more so than I that wants to see a balanced budget for this district. And we've done a tremendous amount of significant work, but we're not done yet and we'll continue to look at, at each and every option and opportunity as it presents itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's critical that everybody acknowledge that there's a delicate balance in the school district between <coughs> supporting our taxpayers, supporting our students, supporting our staff. So the budget that, that was recommended and the time has done a wonderful job with acknowledges that delicate balance. If the board gives us a direction to go and balance it out within the next year, two years, or three years, I want to warn that that delicate balance becomes um, a, a critical piece. But nobody's saying that that would be approved by the majority. I, I okay. What I'm saying is, can I please see some options? I think because the statement's been made. Are, are we afraid, afraid to again, put that on that paper? Anything else further that we're going to do is detrimental to kids. Yeah, I'd like to see that on paper from our finance director. That's all I'm saying. Okay? And nobody wants to harm children's education in District 228. There's nobody saying that. But I think Tom does get paid for his job, and he is probably the smartest one to speak to this. If he's saying it is, then I, I trust him, and I don't need anything on paper. So that's my position. I'm from the show me state. I got to see it. Everybody at home. All right, so we are voting 10.4 resolution for working cash abatement. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Ressler. Aye. Mr. Candy. Aye. Mrs. Gleason. Aye. Mrs. Jones. Aye. Mrs. Campworth. Aye. Ms. Stearns. Aye. Item 10.5 pertains to our winter athletic bids. We reviewed these bids, selected the low bids, and the Finance Committee, along with the Superintendent, are recommending the low bids to the board. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Camper? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Item 10.6 pertains to our fall bid. Similarly, we bid this out to select the low bidders and the Finance Committee, along with the Superintendent, are recommending the low bid of Midland Paper. Second. 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 Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Campworth, aye. Mrs. Aye. Dr. Williams. Thank you. Item 10.7 are the application for recognition of schools. Attached to your board mem uh, memo are all the applications for each of our high schools. They have met the criteria of Illinois School Code 23 along with items related to teacher evaluation. The superintendent is recommending that the school board approve the 2016-17 application for recognition of schools. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Jones. Any discussion? No discussion. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. 
Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Campbell. Aye. Mrs. Ressler. Aye. Mr. Stearns. Aye. Item 10.8 is the revised 2016-17 calendar to move up the two SIP days um, to accommodate state testing April 5th. The Teaching Learning Committee, along with the superintendent, is recommending that the board approve the revised calendar. So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Ressler, second by Ms. Clinton, and the discussion. Joe. Still. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, Mrs. Jones? No. Yes. Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Camper? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mr. Aye. Item 10.9 is the overnight field trip request by Brennan Combs um, in February. They will miss two days of school. Um, the reason for bringing it forward is to provide them time to fundraise um, in the event that they um, secure a spot after the November competition. The teaching and learning committee along with the superintendent recommend the approval of this overnight field trip request. So moved. Second. Mrs. Stearns, Mrs. Gleason, any discussion? Mrs. Stearns? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Camper? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. <coughs> Item 10.10 .10 is a resolution honoring uh, National Principals Month. October is National Principals Month, and I will say that I've been working with this group principals for quite some time, and uh, I appreciate the work that they do, and sometimes they're underappreciated, so publicly I want to say thank you for all you do. Uh, Campbell, could you read the resolution? Whereas the Illinois Principals Association has declared the month of October 2016 as National Principals Month in coordination with the efforts of the National Association of Elementary School Principals, the American Federation of School Administrators, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals, working with the U.S. Congress to designate National Principals Month and resolution thereof. Whereas the week of October 16th through the 22nd, 2016, is also proclaimed as Principals Week and Friday, October 21st, 2016, as Principal's Day in Illinois by Governor Bruce Rauner. Whereas the vision, dedication, and determination of a principal provides the mobilizing force behind any school reform effort. Whereas principals are expected to be educational visionaries, instructional leaders, assessment experts, disciplinarians, community builders, public relation experts, budget analysts, facility managers, special program administrators, and guardians of various legal, contractual, and policy mandates and initiatives, as well as being entrusted with the education and development of young people, the most valuable resource. A lot of hands. Whereas principals will play a vital role in successful implementation of every student succeeds act. Whereas principals set the academic tone for their schools and work collaboratively with teachers to develop and maintain high curriculum standards, develop mission statements, and set performance goals and objectives for schools to achieve educational excellence. Whereas Bremen High School District 228 recognizes its principals who have succeeded in providing high quality learning opportunities for students, as well as their exemplary contributions to the profession. Whereas to honor and recognize the contribution of District 228 school principals, associate principals, and assistant principals to the success of students in Illinois schools, and to engage residents of Illinois to observe National Principals Month, we appropriate activities that promote awareness of school leadership's role in ensuring that every child has access to high quality education. Be a result in honor of the service of all school principals and to recognize the importance of their school leadership so that every child has access to a high quality education and to celebrate school leader accomplishments, the Bremen High School District 228 Board of Education recognizes the month of October 2016 as National Principals Month. Congratulations. Second. I'm proud to sit on a board of, that includes four high schools with just 
excellent, I mean, I, it's, it's speechless, to be honest with you. I, I mean, I think the student engagement and involvement, I couldn't even tell you to this day who my principal's name was, but I mean, I see the student interaction with each of the principals, the stories, the relationships, and I'm proud to serve on your board, so thank you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I don't think the public knows how much of your time is taken away from your family and given to, to ours. It's appreciated. Congratulations. Thank you. Mrs. Campworth, aye. Mrs. Gleason, aye. Mr. Canning, aye. Mr. Johnson, aye. Mrs. Jones, aye. Mrs. Ressler, aye. Mr. Jones, aye. Dr. Adams. Item 1011 pertains to personnel. Under resignations, Daryl Dyson, Krista Bausch, and Philip Burkett. Under leaves, Kelly Henry. Under employment, Kelly Eastman, John Cullen, Conrad Jacobson, Sarah Theriel, Colleen Konecki, Yolanda Pinkney, Michael McCosey, Liesl Barron, Nicole Ramsey, Darcy Walker, Bridget Trump, Elizabeth Collins, Susan Bednarski, Loretta Gesman, Michael Perpera, Dionysia Martinez, Karen Jackson, Michael Young, Christina Lim, Yanitza Zamora, Roberto Sarli, Sarah Theriel, Lindsay Michaels, Yolanda Pinckney, Kristen Smith, John Taylor, Roberto Garcia, Michael Andre, Shalinda Greer, and Deshaun Dockery. The Board's Personnel Committee met on September the 12th. They reviewed the many certificated and support staff, item, staff items on the agenda, and these items are now being presented to the full board for approval. So, second. Is there any discussion? Yes, to, um, how come board members are not in? Uh, I assume that you interview all of these people, Dr. Gardner. I don't. Who, who interviewed these people? Um, various administrators from the buildings. If the administrators then make recommendations to the district office, we review all the paperwork. Many times I'll have discussions with them at the district office, but it's not a formal interview. The formal interviews take place at the building. And that's done by like, um, the principal? Yeah. Um, Phil Burkett, what, what was the situation with him? He actually got another job at a charter school when he resigned from a position of Thank you, Dr. Sam. Okay. And Mark, I just want to just add that when you review these, we, we do get their resumes and letters and applications, right? So we get the opportunity to review all that also. Right. I think we should be uh, somebody in front of the board should do that. I'd love to be a part of interviews, but it's got to be very tiny. Personnel vote. Ms. Stearns? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Camper? Aye. Yeah. At this time, I'm looking for a motion to no session to consider a plan regarding public employment compensation to some performance or dismissal of the specific employees. So moved. Second. Mrs. Jones? Second. Mrs. Jones? Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Gleason. Aye. Mr. Canning. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Camper. Aye. Mrs. Ressler. Aye. Ms. Stearns. Aye. Okay. Mrs. Gleason. Aye. Ms. Stearns. Aye. Mr. Canning. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. Jones. Aye. Mrs. Camper. Aye. Mrs. Ressler. Aye. The Finance Committee will meet Tuesday, October 11th, 7 p.m. at the Ed Center. The next board meeting <coughs> October 18th, 7 p.m. at Tully Park High School. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. aye.